What's up, tribe? How you guys doing? This is going to be your review of Married to Medicine Season 7, Episode 9. Now, this was a pretty fun episode. It wasn't a whole lot of drama. I really thought they were going to have some sort of follow-up to how last week's episode ended with the party. I'm sure we're going to get back to it because y'all know that these girls don't know how to let, excuse me, women, they don't know how to let nothing fall. So, I'm sure we're going to talk about it. But in this episode, there was only a little comment that um, Dr. Heavenly and... Um, Quad, they went on their way to um, dinner. We're going to get back to that. And she made a comment about um, Simone and them leaving, and Quad was saying how she was looking for them. And she said, you know, and, and Dr. Heavenly told her, she said, well, you know, maybe they got a little upset with all that, you know, sister circle stuff. You know, those are your new friends. And Quad was like, no, they, no, no new friends, but it's going to come back up. But what we see in this episode, uh, Contessa is planning a carnival birthday party for all of the kids because she said that while she was in Tennessee, she forgot their birthdays. Now, I hope she means they didn't get a chance to celebrate the birthdays because I can't believe that she gave birth to three babies and she forgot all three birthdays. I, I really think she meant we didn't get a chance to celebrate the birthdays. I, 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 I hope that's what she meant. Um, so she's planning this huge extravaganza, this carnival, honey, and it's going to cost a lot of money, but that's a whole nother uh, conversation that don't have nothing to do with my checkbook. Um, now, Quad has let Dr. Heavenly set her up on a blind date. Honey, that thing wasn't nothing but comedy. Nothing but comedy. The first guy shows up, and Quad looked good, okay? Quad looks good. The first guy shows up. He's a, a, a dentist. Um, Heavily knows him from dental school. And he says that, you know, he's not, he's 47, I think. He's never been married. He does have a child that's only one year old. Quad was like, say what now? Ooh. And he explains that it's sort of, it was sort of a, a oops situation, but it is what it is. Um, and then... Dr. Heavenly going to ask him what his credit score is, and he's going to say he don't know. He told me something, I just let the Lord, I put it in the Lord's hands. And like Quad said, you can put it in the Lord's hands, but the Lord gave us credit.com and, you know, Experian.com and TransUnion. You can check your credit score. But, you know, when you have money and you can get what you want, Okay. So, um, Quad heavily gets up to go, she says to go to the bathroom. She ends up going to the bar. She done invited another guy to my son, well, I was just ready for plan B just in case Quad wasn't feeling the first one. I invited the second one. So she going to bring the second guy over to the table while the first guy's there. The first guy was like, oh, so, oh, oh, my replacement's here already. And I'm sure it was awkward for everybody except for Heavenly. Heavenly didn't seem to think that she was doing nothing wrong. She didn't seem to have a problem with the whole thing. I said, Heavenly, you couldn't just do it on a separate night. You couldn't space it out better than that. And they were total opposites. I mean, one guy was thin. The other guy was heavy set. They were both dentists, though. Um, the second guy seemed like he had more of a, a personality and that I think Qua could get along with, but I don't think he had the aesthetics that Qua would be looking for. So Qua said that she was feeling very uncomfortable, which I could understand. I probably would have felt uncomfortable as well. And she excused herself to go to the bathroom. Now, the first guy, the, the, the one that didn't know his credit score, he gets up and follows her into the ladies' room and then proceeded to put everybody else out so he could have a conversation with Quad. First of all, why y'all leaving? Ain't no way in hell I would have left. I promise you I wouldn't have left. And like Quad said, she was like, I could have been in the bathroom with, with, my, with my panties on the floor. Like, how you just going to come into the ladies' room? Have you lost your mind? Talking about somewhere, I just wanted to have a conversation with you before I left. And, you know, I just wanted you to know. Basically, I want you to know that I'm interested in you and what have you. And I'm thinking to myself, well, if you... If you had a chance, you probably just blew it. Because that's ridiculous. I, I just can't. I cannot. I can't. And Quad told Heavenly, you, you crazy. 
Heavenly time I said, you know, Heavenly, well, I just thought that I would cover all my bases. I mean, you know, I got you to do it, so I just thought I'd give you a two for one. Honey, it, it turned into an O for nothing because Quad passed on both, okay? And Quad said, Lord, if this is what dating is like, I don't know. Yeah. So then we see um, Dr. Simone and Buffy. Buffy went to go see Dr. Simone because she's had a lump. She's found a lump on her breast, and she's very afraid. She's very nervous and scared. Um, it's been six months, which, you know, she said, you're going to yell at me. And, yeah, on one hand, I'm going to fuss at you because you waited so long. But then on the other hand, we you get it. I mean, as a woman... It's a fearful thing. I mean, I mean anybody, I guess. But it's definitely a fearful thing for a woman. You find a lump on your breast and your mind automatically goes to worst case scenario. And you're afraid to get the confirmation. You know, a lot of people, they they, they do that. They avoid they avoid the doctor because they're afraid of the confirmation. Um, now, I don't know why Buffy took that damn suitcase in the seat, but we're going to let that one go. So, Simone does an exam, and Simone says, look, from what I can tell, I do not believe that it's cancerous, but this is what we're going to do. And she said, we're going to refer you for further tests, so forth and so on. And Buffy is admittedly, Buffy looked good in this um, episode, honey. Her makeup, her glasses, her hair, she looked good in this episode. But um, she's just really, really nervous. And I get it. I, I had to get a mammogram a few months ago, and it was just my regular checkup. And they called me the next day saying, we need to see you, you know, as soon as possible. So they said it was something abnormal. And, of course, I was nervous. You know what I mean? I was afraid. My mother was like, do you want me to go with you? Because breast cancer runs in my family. And I got there, and it, was, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't anything to worry about. But it was just they, they didn't get a clear picture, so they needed to do it again to get a clear picture. But, you know, it, it freaked me out. You know what I'm saying? Like, it totally freaked me out. And so I understand where Buffy's coming from. Now, the good news was, because I'm just going to knock this one out. The good news was they did not find anything. Um, but they do want her to keep coming back every three months. And, like, same thing with me. They want me to come back before my, they want me to come back in six months instead of a year just to make sure. And so, of course, in the back of my mind, I'm like, Jesus. But um, the good news, now, we also get to find out her story about the fact that she wasn't able to have children. She said, I don't get good news when I go to the doctor. And she talked about her and her husband and their struggle to have children and how the, that was the plan and nothing has worked. They've done IVF, they've done this, they've done that, and just nothing has worked. And so as a result, you know, they don't have children. I guess they decided against adoption, you know. I'm sure um, they, I mean, I'm not going to say I'm sure, but they may share that part with us later on. Um, but it luckily it turned out to be good, but I definitely understood where Buffy was coming from in, in that moment. Then we catch up with Dr. Jackie. Dr. Jackie has um, purchased a new office space. They've outgrown their old office space. And so um, because Curtis has retired from coaching basketball, um, he's her project manager. So he's walking her through the building. They're seeing the, um, you know, the progress and everything. And so it looks like it's looking good. Congratulations, you know. Um, it's always a great thing when you don't have enough space for what it is you're trying to do. Like, I, I ain't even mad at you, girl. Um, now over to Contessa's, Contessa's house. She going crazy because it's, it's an hour before the party and stuff isn't set up and people are coming in and cars are being blocked. You know, when you have these big parties, you know it's always a lot. She has five or six different vendors doing different things, but she has some cute stuff. You know, she had a spa truck. She had water slides, she had a bouncy house, she had animals, honey, um, and of course the pool, she had a lifeguard, because you got kids in the pool, so she had a lifeguard on duty. It was really, really nice. It looked, but and it looked like she probably had about 500 kids. So she must have invited every kid that her children ever knew. Every classmate, church friend, Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts, gymnastics, basketball. I don't know. Everybody was there. And, of course, her and Scott are still bumping heads. They're still not on the same page. And they're both still talking in their own silos. And, you know, Simone said that now that she's back home, but they're just doing their own thing. Like, they go to bed at night. They, they go to bed at separate times. They, they don't cuddle. She said it's just... So, 
she did ask him to go to th the therapy and he agreed but we see him talking to cecil and he's don't feel like they need it. He said, I mean, I don't think that's where we are right now. I don't think we need therapy. But Cecil was like, mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, you do. <laughs> I guess from the few conversations he's had with him, Cecil's like, no, you do. You need it. Yeah. And he said, and it's a good thing that you agreed to go. You know, that's a big step that you agreed to go. Um, they, she talks to, to Heavenly and Heavenly tells her the same thing. Heavenly is like, look, y'all just need to figure it out. Y'all need to find a way to, you know, she said, just keep working at it. Just keep working at it. And um, so it was a good conversation that they all had. So, uh, Simone had a conversation with um, Jackie. And Jackie was telling her about the new building and everything. And Simone was telling her, look, slow down. You know, you have the house renovations. You're doing the office. You got the book coming out. You're still doing your patience. Slow down down and jackie was like now you know i ain't never done one thing at a time but jackie maybe you need to because wasn't that one of the things with you and curtis and his little infidelity situation that he was saying you weren't available to him so maybe you do need to just slow down and he even made a mention about the house maybe they should wait on the house and she was like no so i don't know i don't know um mariah showed up toya was there with the boys and at one point, at, at, again, remember I told you, about. A, I'm not exaggerating when I say it's got to be well over 100 kids running around. And they're in and out the pool. So, uh, Toya's um, son said something about the pool being dirty. And you know Mariah had to make a little smart-ass comment about the pool being dirty. The pool probably was dirty. Have y'all ever seen a pool where kids are jumping in and out all day long? They get out, they run to the bathroom, or they run to get something to eat, or they run over here. And then they jump back in the pool with dirt on their feet whatever on their hands so i am pretty certain that about halfway through the party or by the end of the party it was dirty but that was some shady shit okay y'all yeah, know how mariah is and toya threw her little tooth told, talking about something i don't want them to get back in the pool no that pool is dirty there toya stop it you just stop it toya so um at it was one point in the party, Dad going, um, um, uh, Scott accidentally hit Contessa with the baby. And she said, see, he still don't see me. I, he just don't see me. I, he just doesn't see me. Um, Contessa is stress eating. It was a mess. But just like anything else, it came together, and it was a really nice party, and the kids had a really good time. Like, you could tell they had a good time. And then Contessa and, um... Scott have a little conversation towards the end. They sitting there with their cocktails. And she apologized for snapping at him. She apologized for, you know, coming at him sideways earlier on when they were getting ready for the party. And I don't know if I really heard him accept the apology, but he said, we just got to figure it out. We got to we gotta get back on the same page. We got to we gotta really get it back together. And they, had, they were wearing these shirts that said Team Metcalf. And he said, well, do you feel like we're really Team Metcalf right now or are we just faking it? And he said... He used a, a bat. He used a football, a, a sports analogy. But basically, he was like, "We're good, you know. We we're still a team, but we just on we just got the wrong playbook or something like that." So I mean, they both know that they need some help. Um, but what I'm glad is that they're willing to go get it. Um, and it's and it's on both sides. I know I've been giving Contessa a hard time the last couple of weeks, but I mean, I'm sure Scott is not innocent in this. But I think that they just definitely need to talk. So it looks like that's what they're going to do next episode. So anyway, let me know what y'all think. Drop it in them comments. Peace.